Students, let us understand the topic bar graphs. What is a bar graph? We know it comes under the graphical representation of the data. So why do we use graphical representation? As it is known that the graphical or I should say the photographical memory is much much better than the regular memory. So we try to represent data in the form of graphs that makes it easier to compare the values or also it makes easier to understand the information given to us. So if I let you know what is a bar graph, on a bar graph, let me first give you an example. This is the example in front of us. You may see, what do you see first of all? Whenever we start the bar graph, we start it by two mutually perpendicular lines. This you can see over here. Okay, this is a horizontal line and we make one vertical line. and they need to be perpendicular to each other that's why we use the term mutually perpendicular lines these lines are called x-axis and y-axis right so we have x-axis and y-axis so as you know that when we talk about the representation of data we are simply writing the frequency of the information which is available over there so where do we need to write what things it totally depends on the graph which you are using we generally or we usually write the variables on the x-axis what do we write on x-axis we write the variables it could be variables, it could be the parameters, it could be the heads of the question. Okay, so the parameters of the variables, they are denoted on the x-axis, that is the horizontal axis. Now, when we talk about the y-axis, as you know that we are going to write the value of these variables, it has to be written on the y-axis. So, what, this, what does this y-axis stand for? The value of the variables. And what exactly is the value of variables? It is simply the frequency, isn't it? It is the frequency, right? So it is the frequency which is being shown on the y-axis. So is it the only thing? No. Now comes the major part. As the word states, what is it? It is bar graph. So bar is what? It's a rectangular bar which you can see over here. This rectangular bar must be of the same width or equal width. You can see over here that the width of each rectangular bar is just the same. Here if you look at it, you can see that each rectangular bar is of one block width. Right? Why I am saying one block? Because when you look at the graph page, you will see that there are blocks being made. Consecutive blocks are over there which are of one centimeter length. It is a square, I must say, of one centimeter side. So each width, you know, each bar's width is same. You could take it as two centimeter or two blocks width, but in that case, you will have to take the width of each rectangular bar as two blocks. So what is the very first thing? The width of the rectangular bar must be one block or one centimeter or must be equal to each other. That is the four most important thing. Now, if I look at it, you can see that there is a gap between each consecutive rectangular bar. You may see that the gap between each consecutive bar is also the same. Why is it same? Because when we do it like this, it, it forms a uniformity. It becomes easy to understand. If I do make one bar over here and then the one bar quite far away and the third bar with very close to that, it won't look good. It will become easy or it will not become easy. It becomes difficult to understand. So to, to you know, make it easier to understand we keep the difference of the or the gap between each rectangular bar as same and over here you may see that this is also one centimeter away from each other if width is same if the gap between them is same then isn't it going to be the same throughout no the change would be the heights you can see the heights 
the heights of the rectangular bars are quite different. So the heights depends on what? It depends on the frequency or the value of that variable which this graph is going to represent. Right? The height of the rectangular bar totally depends upon the value of the frequency. And you can see like if I look over here, if I remove everything, this data, if I see this looks like to be, you know, the, the number of scooters being sold by a company in certain amount of years. So the very first year is 2004. It's variable, isn't it? Because it will change then 2005, 2006 and so on. So if I just give it a look, I see that in the month of 2004, there are 11,000 students, sorry, 11,000 scooters being sold. So do I need to write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and till 11,000? Would it be possible? Not at all. So to make that problem easier, we take the scale on the graph. What do we take? We take the scale on the graph. We usually write it on the right corner, top right corner. We write the scale over here. That scale defines, what do we write here? We write the scale. So what does the scale do? Scale defines the number of frequency which one block will show to us. So here it looks like the one small division is 200 and one big division is 2000. That means one centimeter of the length over y axis shows 2000 scooters. So now if I look at the height, this height matches with the middle of this 10,000 to 12,000. So it is going to be 11,000. Over here it is 14,000. Then here we have 13,000 and so on. So these heights represent the value of the frequency given for a certain problem. So this is what the bar graph is all about. It's about the representation of data in the form of rectangular bars of equal widths having the equal gap in between them and their heights represents the frequency of the variable which that bar is representing. I hope it is clear. Let us just write few things about it few important things related to bar graph. Let us just make it a bit smaller. So what is a bar graph? Let us write about bar graph. In a bar graph, two mutually perpendicular Two mutually perpendicular lines, one horizontal and one vertical are drawn and named as x-axis and y-axis, right? What have we written? In a bar graph, two mutually perpendicular lines, one horizontal and one vertical are drawn and named as x-axis and y-axis. x-axis is the horizontal line which represents the variables or the parameters. Right? Horizontal line is named as x-axis. It represents the variables or the parameters given in a particular question. Next, y-axis is the vertical line which 
which represents the value of the variables or the frequency are we clear these are the basics very basic part of the bar graph that it will have two mutually perpendicular lines it would be named as x-axis and y-axis x-axis is going to represent the variable and y-axis will represent the frequency right what else do we need to write about it rectangular bars of equal width are drawn on the graph with equal gaps between them they you know their height represents the value of the variable or the frequency right so what are the rectangular bars rectangular bars of equal width are drawn on the graph with equal gaps between them their height represents the value of the variable or the frequency so this is what the bar graph look like it will have two mutually perpendicular axes that is x axis and y axis one of it will be for the variables the other would be for the value of it that is the frequency we use the rectangular bars of equal width and equal gap between them and their height varies and it depends upon the value of the variable or the frequency we are going to do some questions related to it as well i hope this part is clear to all of you thank you so much